Hi dears, welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing class 6, third lesson that is separation of substances. What was the second lesson? Sorting out of materials. We have seen different types of materials and we understood how to sort out these materials, isn't it? I have asked you three questions. Do you remember children? It's a time to answer these questions. Question number one. Aquatic animals respire the dissolved dash from water. Answer is oxygen. Yes. Second question was window glasses are made of dash material. Answer is translucent material. It is not opaque material or transparent material. If it is opaque, uh, it will be much more darker. So, uh, if it is transparent, everything can be seen from outside. So, the material will be translucent. Okay, dears. The third question was Cupboards are made of wood which is a dash. Which is dash? That means it is hard. Whether it is hard or soft was the question. The answer is hard. Now it's the time to see. Second lesson, third lesson that is separation of substances. We are going to separate different substances. Why we have to separate? Because there may be some impurities uh, within the substance. Or we have to separate the good things uh, to separate substance. For example, when we have to separate butter from the milk, we are churning it, isn't it? When we are churning it, what will happen? The butter will be separated from the uh, from uh, from this yogurt. So, uh, this is the way. So, both the things we are using. Okay, the separation is very essential. Okay, dears, let me see what are the methods. For example, if you are having um, a mixture, in the mixture, um, this peanut is there. Okay, you are interested in eating this peanut, right? I am interested, that's why I am saying. Okay, uh, if you are interested, what will you do? How will you take this peanut out from the mixture? First, you will throw, uh, put it in a um, uh, plate. And then you are picking, you will pick the peanut and will eat, isn't it? Hand picking is a method actually. Okay, it's a method. Slightly larger substances can be separated out. If the uh, substance is large enough, uh, compared to other substance and if it is possible for us to separate we can separate it for your mothers uh, or your um, or your grandparents may separate uh, for, from the rice if stones are there they used to separate by this method only okay this is they will pick up the stones from the from the bunch of rice okay this is the method okay this is hand picking method second is thrashing what is it thrashing actually have you seen the grains stack of grains Stack of grains which contains grains will be there at the end of the stack. Okay, yes. So, it has to be separated. How it can, can we uh, pick it up? No, there are much more grains. How can we pick it up? It will take years for us to pick. Okay. So, what is the other way? First one is, they are making it dry. They will keep the stack to be dried in the sun. After that, they will collect it as a bunch and they will beat it. They will beat it in a big or a large stone. So what will happen? The grains will be jumped away. Jump, jumped out from the stack. By this way they can separate it. Um, if you have not seen it and you are not going for this risk, right? So you may have seen, if you are having hairs, I am not saying about boys. Uh, if you are having hairs much more or your parent, your mother is having hair, what will she do? When she had a uh, head bath, what will she do? The hair from the hair, the water droplets will be there. She will remove it. How she will remove you? Have you ever seen? No, ma'am. We are not having time enough to see all this, right? Actually, you are. Uh, you have to learn it. But still, I am saying, if you have just time to see, just go and see how she is removing it. She will make the towel into curl, and she will. She will do the same thing. She will beat it over the hair. What will happen? The uh, the uh, water droplets will be removed. This is a kind of crushing because. Okay, tell to her, this is thrashing what you are doing. Huh? Okay, now the third one is winnowing. What is this winnowing? Same peanut we are coming. Peanut, first your mother, uh, if you want to have the peanut, a uh, roasted peanut, what will she do? She will roast, she will be always in the kitchen, right? She will be going on roasting for the peanut. Will you eat the peanut like that? You have to peel it up, right? You, are you ready to peel it up? You will tell your mother to peel it up. So what will she do? She will peel it up first. After that, she will use this kind of thing. In my house also, my children are making me do it. That's why. See, this kind of thing. What is that? She will winnow it. So what happens? 
the mixture which contain the light substance and the heavy substance is called soup not s o u p it is s o o p okay when she is uh, making it blow in air what will happen the wind will take the light weight substances out that is called the husk and the grains will be remained back okay this process is called winnowing the same thing can be used for separating the grains uh, from this a uh, stack or uh, some piece of husk all these uh, impurities are there it has been removed by this method we know is it the concept clear for you this is the way with the help of wind if uh, the soup is there which uh, that is the mixture of mixture of heavy and light substance are there when she is doing like this the air or the wind will take the lighter substance out and the heavier substance will be remained okay this is called you know heavier and lighter components are separated by this method then the fourth one is saving if you are telling your mother to make a laddu or besan bundi or something besan is used besan means uh, that uh, okay can cut it ground floor is used ground floor is used karna so what the thing is the ground floor has to be <coughs> so finely powdered how can you make it the finely powdered ground floor there may be some uh, lumps will uh, in it or some uh, small kind of insect will be there if they are the it has to be removed right so we are using this kind of thing what is this sieve a sieve sieve is the thing sieving when we are sieving when we are putting the flour on it and when we are doing like this what will happen the lighter components will settle down while the heavier will be will be over here by this method bigger impurities from the powdered ones the way to remove the bigger impurities from the powdered ones is sieving okay now tell me we have seen which kind of impurities which is removed from what all things that means whether it is from liquid or from uh, solid or from gas we are separating till then till this these four things we are separated the impurities from solids as in now we are going to see how we can separate the impurities from a liquid till this extent we have seen how we have to remove impurities from the solid substance now we are moving to see how we can remove the impurities from a liquid okay dear first way is sedimentation what is the sedimentation okay you may have seen the kitchen right everyone seen the kitchen but what is cooking that we didn't see right na actually when the rice is there when the raw rice is there going to be cooked what your mother will do you know Uh, she will take the rice and she will wash it wash it after that she will keep it for one minute within uh, one minute or two minutes we can see the rice will be settling in uh, down and the water water in pure water is settling in upside this is called sedimentation that is settling down of heavier substance why the rice is settling down because it is much more heavier than water that's why the heavier substance will come under in the down side right it is called sedimentation what will your mother do then she will remove this water how she will remove she will throw it like this <laughs> no she will not do it she will slightly she will slightly she will keep hand over this rice and she will uh, remove uh, with a much more patience she will remove the water okay dear so how uh, how much she is training for giving this food for you right so this is called what ma decantation okay what is decantation removal of impure substance liquid impure liquid from this uh, solid as the solid and liquid when they are mixed and if the solid are much more heavier it will settle down and the impure liquid above it can be removed it is called decantation it is removed or we can uh, keep it in the other other uh, vessel or something like that it is called what decantation okay now i am coming to our um, our uh, the things which we are doing okay dear if we are having some kind of water muddy water can we purify this water okay let's see we are going for an experiment are you ready to now see i am having one glass of water okay i am having some sand what i am having i am having some sand with me i am going to put this sand over it. can you see the sand is falling down how beautiful it is right it is falling down okay this uh, i am making the water impure 
and moreover i am having some dried leaves i am also putting these dried leaves over there okay so i am making the water impure because i have put sand as well as dried leaf see the sand is settling down can you see the sand over here the sand is settled the sand is settled down now we are saying it as sedimentation because the sand is much more heavier than the water it is settling down while the light weight this thing no what dry leaves it is settling on the top okay now as i told you i am going for the decantation i am having one more glass with me and i am slowly pouring it so that the sand will not be removed see almost all the water have has been poured and the sand is removed there is not even a bit of sand in this water now sedimentation is over and this is decantation but is the water pure kanna is the water pure can you drink this water no this is not pure now we have to remove this kind of impurities well, how can we do it we have to filter it have you remember how your mother makes a tea strainer strainer she is using for removing the tea leaves from the tea isn't it in the same way we can use a strainer or better than that we can use a cloth or a kerchief like that you can use it see ma i am using one kerchief okay and in this there is a vessel okay in it i am keeping over it and what i am doing i am i am pouring this water over it i am pouring this water over it what will happen is the water which i am pouring will be devoid of this kind of impurities can you see this impurities over here impurities can be seen impurities are there in the top while the pure water is coming down this is what this is called filtration what is filtration removal of solid impurities which is much more lighter and which are not able to be settled down are removed by the way or called filtration so that the water which i have strained removed is now it is so clear the water is so clear there is no impurities in this water okay can i drink this water yes ma'am you can drink but you can be hospitalized right because we don't know whether uh, because i have put sand i have put uh, this dry leaves and all so it may have some it may have some bacteria or some microorganisms which may affect my health so what i have to do i have to make it boil when we are boiling it what will happen you know when we are boiling it this germs will be died and then i can drink this kind of water this filtration can be seen this filtration can be seen for uh, getting this vegetable soup okay uh, when uh, when the vegetables uh, when your mother is making this vegetables with water if she is cooking it if you want to have this soup she can filter it and can give it to you is very healthy for you kanna and to remove this paneer from milk okay how can we make paneer ask your mother she may say uh, see when you are boiling this milk and when you, you are adding lemon on this what will happen the milk will be changed and if you have to keep it overnight then it will become paneer the solid and liquid will be in a fusion manner we have to remove with a with a piece of cloth with the help of cloth i can remove this liquid out and the solid paneer can be taken away taken first so this by this way all these things are made are done at home okay this kind of filtration they are using over there now we are uh, we are moving for the case where the water is having salt if this water is having salt if i am adding salt in this water can i drink this water just by boiling will uh, the salt be removed if the water is boiled no because why the salt is miscible in water the salt is soluble in water and the water will be having salt all all the parts of water will be having salt and it will not be settled down even though we are boiling it so what we have to do we have to make the water vapor separate and make it in the form of water didn't get you do you didn't get it so what we have to do if this water which i am having is 
is containing salt also. I am not able to drink this water. But I want to make this water to be pure one. What, what we have to do? We have to make it boil. Okay. When we are allowing it to boil, the water changes into water vapor. That process is called what ma? It is called evaporation. By the process of water, uh, evaporation, the water is changes into water vapor. Along with the water vapor, salt is also coming. No, salt is not coming. Salt is not coming. Only water is changes into water vapor. We are keeping a metal plate to the water vapor directly. And the metal plate, if it is having some lumps of ice above it, what will happen? This water vapor, as it is attaching to the metal, will be turned into liquid because over the cooling is happening because metal is the surface which can, where if ice is kept at the top, it will be in the cooled form, right? When the water vapor is just attached to this metal, it will be cooled suddenly and from the water vapor, drops of water will be coming down. If you are collecting it, that water will be extremely pure. The process by which changing of the water vapor into water is called what ma? It is called condensation. By the process of evaporation and condensation, we can remove the salt. At the end, when all the water is boiled up, we can see in the jug, is there anything? Yes. That salt, white salt, we can take it in. What we have seen? We have seen when we are mixing salt in water and how we have to separate it, isn't it? Ma? Now, I am having a, having a fascination of uh, mixing salt in water. I am adding salt to it and I am mixing it. It is dissolved. Again, if I am adding one spoon and again mixing it thoroughly, it will be dissolved. Again, if I am adding salt and if I am mixing, am I mad? Not because that I am mad. I want to explain hmm. something to you. That's why, okay, dears. Uh, if I am adding much more hmm. salt in it and if I am mixing, when a stage is reached, we are not able to dissolve the excess salt. It will be, it will be settled as the sediment which we have seen. As a sediment, this extra salt will be settled down. Why is it so? There is a specialty of the liquid that it is able to dissolve the uh, substances to a maximum extent. Above it, it will not be able to dissolve it. The amount of substance which the liquid can dissolve to the maximum is called saturation. What we are saying is, it is called saturation. Uh, when the saturation is reached, even though we are adding more and more and more, it will be, the, so the substance will be settling in the down without any movement. Okay. This is called saturation. Okay. I am not able to dissolve. So what I am doing is, I am heating that. With uh, this extra, a little salt is there. And I am taking the glass of water uh, like that. Along with this salt I am adding and I am heating it. What will happen? That salt, it has been as an excess one, is now dissolved. Because when we are increasing the temperature, the saturation will also be increased. The level will be, uh, the amount of uh, substances with which the water can dissolve or any liquid can dissolve also will be increased. Okay. This is what about the temperature. When the temperature is increasing, much more substances can be dissolved in water or any other liquids. Okay. Now, suppose if I am able to dissolve two spoons of salt in one glass of water, can I dissolve only two spoons of sugar in the same amount of water? We can't say because it depends on the substance. If the substance changes, the dissolution amount of the substance which we are dissolving in the water or the liquid also changes. These are the important points you have to note. Okay, dears, we are understanding much more lessons, much more things in the lesson, right? What we have learned, threshing, winnowing, hand picking, then, then sieving, then from liquid, how can we remove? Sedimentation, can you do at home this sedimentation and decantation? It will be much more interesting for you, okay? With uh, two or three glasses and all, you can do it, okay, ma? Sedimentation, decantation, filtration, then boiling, then uh, how can we get the pure water? Pure water from hmm, pure water uh, from the salt water that is condensation by that way. Okay. Now in the text they have asked you one question. 
how can you separate sand from salt? I think now you are able to answer it. How can you separate sand and salt from the mixture of sand and salt? Is it by hand picking? Not possible. We knowing? Not possible. Then what is the method? First method is we have to add large amount of water in that the solution. Okay. So that they, so the, all the salt should be dissolved in the water. After when you are adding much more amount of water, we have to dissolve it with a spoon or with a, uh, some uh, some big big things. You can dissolve, make it dissolve so that you have to make sure that all the salt from the sand and the salt mixture is dissolved in this water. Now you have to allow it for settle down. After sometimes you can see what mark sand is settled down. Sedimentation is there. Now you are have to decant that water. Okay, ma'am. You can decant this water. Now is the water pure? No. Now the water has become what? It has been changed from sand and salt water to salt water. Okay. Now it is a salt water. Okay. What is the next process, ma'am? Filtration is not needed. If if uh, much more dusty particles are there, filtration is also good for you. Okay. If you are filtering it, it will be all the muddy items will be removed and the water will be clean. Then. Then the next step is boiling. If you are boiling, what will happen? Evaporation will happen. Okay. When evaporation is coming up, the water vapors again with the help of metal which is kept in the side. And if the ice is kept in the above it, this evaporation water vapor will be condensed to form pure water. Now, the water can be, has been changed into pure form and at the bottom if all the water when has been removed you can see the salt and in the sedimentation part clay or sand has been removed. This is the way you have to remove. Okay dears. Now the lesson is clear for you. It's the question time. Are you ready children? This is the question time. First question. To separate oil and water which method is used? To separate oil from a mixture of oil and water which method is used second one dash is the way to remove big impurities from powdered substances dash is the method which is used to separate big impurities from the powdered substances third third question is the process of Converting liquid into vapor is called a dash. The process of converting the liquid into vapor is called a dash. Okay, children. Thank you.